Hey, this is Miko. We're gonna do a quick video. We're gonna compare uh, Hyundai um, Tucson. Uh, this is the SE trim that we happen to have. It's a brand new 2022. And we're gonna compare it to Nissan Rogue, which kind of like the comparable car that we just have available. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna look around this car. We're gonna step outside, look at the trunk, look at the rear seat. We're gonna do the same on the other one. Then we're gonna drive this one around the block and we'll drive the Nissan Rogue. So you'll be able to see how these cars compare in real life situation. So first of all, I'm. this is pretty much like my second time in this car, uh, the Hyundai Tucson. Uh, seats are fairly comfortable. These are cloth seats. There's not a lot of lum uh, like a bolster support. There is lumbar support, so these are pretty good seats. The steering wheel both uh, tilts and it's telescopic, so that's fairly comfortable. Um, elbow position is fairly good. The shifter, I can tell this is like the old school mechanical shifter, not a big deal. Screen layout is pretty comfortable, uh, looks really well. The only thing that's a little confusing, the AC controls, there's there's no auto climate control, it's just manual. And this one has the heated seats, but the controls are here. So, you know, not a big deal, but just a little bit weird. All right, let's step outside, we'll look at the rear seat and the trunk. All right. Rear seat, the door opens pretty wide, so that's comfortable, especially if you have kids, child seat to put in. Good room in the back. There's an adjustment for, for this seat. So I guess this is where I can fold it, but I also can change the angle. There's a little bit of a bump in the middle, but looks like it's not too bad for three people in the back. There are USB, USB outlets and there are climate control outlets in the back. Uh, no moonroof, no sunroof. Again, not a big deal. Uh, let's look at the truck. Okay, good size trunk, fairly deep. This is kind of like in the middle, the privacy cover. Um, I'm sure we can take it out if we had to, to get more room covers everything you have but there's like a little bit of an opening I guess because of the rear seat that moves back and forth if we open this this is where the spare is so not a lot of storage there but decent size trunk and let's just see what happens if we won't fold the seat okay so stay here take a look I want to see how flat it goes okay so that's it's as flat as it goes you know, manageable, not a big deal, pretty good. All right. Let's look at the position in the, let's start with the rear seat on this car. Okay, so also opens wide, which is again, it's important when you have the child seat to put in, or just for ease of access. Good room, no problem here. So really comfortable, uh, pretty much the same outlets in the back, USB controls are here, that's pretty much the same. There's no adjustment for uh, for this seat, so I guess it either folds or doesn't fold and uh, cannot play with this. Um, the seat feels a little bit more comfortable, there's like a little bit more support and also kind of like design fake leather, a little bit cloth here, so a little bit different. Let's look at the trunk of this one. So, same idea, uh, seats split 60-40, you can fold, you just fold them from here. Same idea here, that's where the spare is, nothing else is here. Uh, looks pretty comparable. This car is longer, so it will make sense that it has more, a little bit longer trunk space, but then it comes on the, on that kind of the parking, you know, how easy it will be to park. Let's see. Okay, let's fold the seat just to see what it looks like. All right, so you see it folds automatically pretty flat. That's basically it. All right. So that's done. And now we're going to take the Hyundai and we're going to take it on the quick test drive. Okay. So we have the 
have the camera come up. It shows the adjustment, what happens when you turn the steering wheel. Car is fairly quiet. There's a nice bump. Let's see how it feels on the bump. Pretty good. Steering is responsive. Let's get this away so it doesn't make any noise. All right, so um, pretty much all new cars have different driving modes. Right now we're in normal mode. It struggles a little bit for acceleration, it gets a little loud, but you get good speed. So we got up to about 45 miles an hour. And we're gonna test the braking just to make, just to see how it goes. Once we go to the red light, I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive with the braking. I'll come into the stop a little bit hot. On about 30 35 hit the brakes okay good braking absolutely no complaints and let's try the sport mode okay it gets really loud i don't get a lot of response not a big difference it just gets really loud let's try again so accelerating into the turn feels pretty good. Again, no complaints about steering. Responsive, pretty intuitive. Just this, the, the sport mode, it's kind of a while. So I'll go back to normal. Again, give it a little push. So again, you can hear for yourself how loud it is. And uh, we're back. So it should be easy to compare it to the Nissan Rogue in terms of the comfort and the quietness. All right. So, and let's jump into the Rogue and try that out. of the expectations on the Rogue it has less horsepower so we have to take this into account it has the different shif shifter so that's the like a drive-by-wire electronic shifter uh, which means that when you want to put it to park you really don't need to shift just push the button or if you leave the car in drive or reverse push the stop button it will go into park same thing we're gonna pay attention to the steering right now no complaints about the steering sounds about the same noise level is about the same pretty quiet and these cars are known this is the CVT transmission continuously variable which is smoother gives you smoother acceleration which we're going to test all right so it gets up to speed at least it feels like much faster i cannot go fast because there's a car in front of us but uh, it's smoother more responsive it still gets loud but not as loud as the hunter Steering is responsive, and we're going to try the braking on the light, going in about 40. Solid braking, no complaints. And on the way back, let's change it to the sport mode to see what happens. Okay, so also gets louder, but you do get, you do get different response from the car. Whatever they're doing, it actually changes how the car feels. And um, I'm just behind a couple of cars, we'll get up front and get a go. So you can see this one has the dual zone climate control. Uh, the start button is in a different location, so let's 
a little bit weird for me you know it's not the traditional location and not under your hand but uh, doable uh, it has the auto hold feature I'm gonna let this guy through it's got more information on the driver display not a big difference all right so we're gonna try real acceleration in sport mode miles per hour so still I mean you can hear everything you can see how fast the car gets going uh, it is smoother definitely feels smoother hard to say on the power it shows on paper less horsepower but I didn't have any trouble accelerating to 60 miles an hour so that's basically it both solid cars you know comparable right now what's going on with the car market uh, these cars are much more available they're least special so that's you know neither here nor there that might change in a few months but right now you can get if you cannot get you know one of the cars that are on the top of the list for everybody uh, you can get these cars and um, that's a good alternative and that's it thanks for watching